landing. The program was ultimately cancelled, leaving the Soviet Union with a surplus of newly qualified engines without a clear purpose. These examples demonstrate the complex dynamics and challenges faced by the Soviet Union in managing the development and production of rocket engines through design bureaus. Accidents, edit. The development of rocket engines in the Soviet Union was marked by significant achievements, but it also carried ethical considerations due to numerous accidents and fatalities. From a science and technology studies point of view, the ethical implications of these incidents shed light on the complex relationship between technology, human factors, and the prioritization of scientific advancement over safety. The Soviet Union encountered a series of tragic accidents and mishaps in the development and operation of rocket engines. Notably, the USSR holds the unfortunate distinction of having experienced more injuries and deaths resulting from liquid propellant rocket engine LPRE, accidents than any other country. These incidents brought into question the ethical considerations surrounding the development, testing, and operational use of rocket engines. One of the most notable disasters occurred in 1960 when the R-16 ballistic missile suffered a catastrophic accident on the launch pad at the Tiuratan launch facility. This incident resulted in the deaths of 124 engineers and military personnel, including Marshal M. I. Nedelin, a former deputy minister of defense. The explosion occurred after the second stage rocket engine suddenly ignited causing the fully loaded missile to disintegrate. The explosion resulted from the ignition and explosion of the mixed hypergolic propellants, consisting of nitric acid with additives and UDMH, unsymmetrical dimethylhydrazine. While the immediate cause of the 1960 accident was attributed to a lack of protective circuits in the missile control unit, the ethical considerations surrounding LPRE accidents in the USSR extend beyond specific technical failures. The secrecy surrounding these accidents, which remained undisclosed for approximately three decades, raises concerns about transparency, accountability, and the protection of human life. The decision to keep fatal LPRE accidents hidden from the public eye reflects a broader ethical dilemma. The Soviet government, driven by the pursuit of scientific and technological superiority during the Cold War, sought to maintain an image of invincibility and conceal the failures that accompanied their advancements. This prioritization of national prestige over the well-being and safety of workers raises questions about the ethical responsibility of the state and the organizations involved. Testing, edit. Rocket engines are usually statically tested at a test facility before being put into production. For high altitude engines, either a shorter nozzle must be used, or the rocket must be tested in a large vacuum chamber. Safety, edit. Rocket vehicles have a reputation for unreliability and danger, especially catastrophic failures. Contrary to this reputation, Carefully designed rockets can be made arbitrarily reliable. In military use, rockets are not unreliable. However, one of the main non-military uses of rockets is for orbital launch. In this application, the premium has typically been placed on minimum weight, and it is difficult to achieve high reliability and low weight simultaneously. In addition, if the number of flights launched is low, there is a very high chance of a design, operations or manufacturing error causing destruction of the vehicle. Saturn Family, 1961-1975, edit. The rocket Dyn H1 engine, used in a cluster of eight in the first stage of the Saturn I and Saturn IB launch vehicles, had no catastrophic failures in 152 engine flights. The Pratt & Whitney RL-10 engine, used in a cluster of six in the Saturn I second stage, had no catastrophic failures in 36 engine flights. 
the rocket Dyne F-1 engine, used in a cluster of five in the first stage of the Saturn V, had no failures in 65 engine flights. The rocket Dyne J-2 engine, used in a cluster of five in the Saturn V second stage, and singly in the Saturn IV second stage and Saturn V third stage, had no catastrophic failures in 86 engine flights. Space Shuttle, 1981-2011, Edit The Space Shuttle Solid Rocket Booster, used in pairs, caused one notable catastrophic failure in 270 engine flights. The RS-25, used in a cluster of three, flew in 46 refurbished engine units. These made a total of 405 engine flights with no catastrophic in-flight failures. A single in-flight RS-25 engine failure occurred during Space Shuttle Challenger's STS-51F mission. This failure had no effect on mission objectives or duration. Cooling, edit. For efficiency reasons, higher temperatures are desirable but materials lose their strength if the temperature becomes too high. Rockets run with combustion temperatures that can reach 6,000 degrees Fahrenheit, 3,300 degrees Celsius, 3,600 K. Most other jet engines have gas turbines in the hot exhaust. Due to their larger surface area, they are harder to cool and hence there is a need to run the combustion processes at much lower temperatures, losing efficiency. In addition, duct engines use air as an oxidant, which contains 78% largely unreactive nitrogen, which dilutes the reaction and lowers the temperatures. Rockets have none of these inherent combustion temperature limiters. The temperatures reached by combustion in rocket engines often substantially exceed the melting points of the nozzle and combustion chamber materials, about 1200 K for copper. Most construction materials will also combust if exposed to high temperature oxidizer, which leads to a number of design challenges. The nozzle and combustion chamber walls must not be allowed to combust, melt, or vaporize sometimes facetiously termed an engine-rich exhaust. Rockets that use common construction materials such as aluminium, steel, nickel or copper alloys must employ cooling systems to limit the temperatures that engine structures experience. Regenerative cooling, where the propellant is passed through tubes around the combustion chamber or nozzle, and other techniques, such as film cooling, are employed to give longer nozzle and chamber life. These techniques ensure that a gaseous thermal boundary layer touching the material is kept below the temperature which would cause the material to catastrophically fail. Material exceptions that can sustain rocket combustion temperatures to a certain degree are carbon-carbon materials and rhenium, although both are subject to oxidation under certain conditions. Other refractory alloys such as alumina, molybdenum, tantalum or tungsten have been tried, but were given up on due to various issues. Materials technology, combined with the engine design, is a limiting factor in chemical rockets. In rockets, the heat fluxes that can pass through the wall are among the highest in engineering. Fluxes are generally in the range of 0.880 MW forward slash M. 0.5-50 BTU forward slash in sec. The strongest heat fluxes are found at the throat, which often sees twice that found in the associated chamber and nozzle. This is due to the combination of high speeds, which gives a very thin boundary layer, and although lower than the chamber, the high temperatures seen there. See nozzle above four temperatures in nozzle. In rockets the coolant methods include one ablative, the combustion chamber inside walls are lined with a material that traps heat and carries it away with the exhaust as it vaporizes. Two radiative cooling, the engine is made of one or several refractory materials, which take heat flux until its outer thrust chamber wall glows red or white hot, radiating the heat away. Three dump cooling, a cryogenic propellant, 
usually hydrogen, is passed around the nozzle and dumped. This cooling method has various issues, such as wasting propellant. It is only used rarely. For regenerative cooling, the fuel, and possibly, the oxidizer, of a liquid rocket engine is routed around the nozzle before being injected into the combustion chamber or preburner. This is the most widely applied method of rocket engine cooling. 5. Film cooling. The engine is designed with rows of multiple orifices lining the inside wall through which additional propellant is injected, cooling the chamber wall as it evaporates. This method is often used in cases where the heat fluxes are especially high, likely in combination with regenerative cooling. A more efficient subtype of film cooling is transpiration cooling, in which propellant passes through a porous inner combustion chamber wall and transpirates. So far, this method has not seen usage due to various issues with this concept. Rocket engines may also use several cooling methods. Examples 1. Regeneratively and film cooled combustion chamber and nozzle, V2 rocket engine. 2. Regeneratively cooled combustion chamber with a film cooled nozzle extension, rocket dyne F1 engine. 3. Regeneratively cooled combustion chamber with an ablatively cooled nozzle extension, the LR91 rocket engine. 4. Ablatively and film cooled combustion chamber with a radiatively cooled nozzle extension, a unimodule descent engine, LMDE, service propulsion system engine, SPS. 5. Radiatively and film cooled combustion chamber with a radiatively cooled nozzle extension, deep space storable propellant thrusters. In all cases, Another effect that aids in cooling the rocket engine chamber wall is a thin layer of combustion gases, a boundary layer, that is notably cooler than the combustion temperature. Disruption of the boundary layer may occur during cooling failures or combustion instabilities, and wall failure typically occurs soon after. With regenerative cooling a second boundary layer is found in the coolant channels around the chamber. This boundary layer thickness needs to be as small as possible, since the boundary layer acts as an insulator between the wall and the coolant. This may be achieved by making the coolant velocity in the channels as high as possible. Liquid-fueled engines are often run fuel-rich, which lowers combustion temperatures. This reduces heat loads on the engine and allows lower cost materials and a simplified cooling system. This can also increase performance by lowering the average molecular weight of the exhaust and increasing the efficiency with which combustion heat is converted to kinetic exhaust energy. Chemistry, edit. Rocket propellants require a high energy per unit mass, specific energy, which must be balanced against the tendency of highly energetic propellants to spontaneously explode. Assuming that the chemical potential energy of the propellants can be safely stored, the combustion process results in a great deal of heat being released. A significant fraction of this heat is transferred to kinetic energy in the engine nozzle, propelling the rocket forward in combination with the mass of combustion products released. Ideally all the reaction energy appears as kinetic energy of the exhaust gases as exhaust velocity is the single most important performance parameter of an engine. However, real exhaust species are molecules, which typically have translation, vibrational, and rotational modes with which to dissipate energy. Of these, only translation can do useful work to the vehicle, and while energy does transfer between modes this process occurs on a time scale far in excess of the time required for the exhaust to leave the nozzle. The more chemical bonds an exhaust molecule has, the more rotational and vibrational modes it will have. Consequently, it is generally desirable for the exhaust species to be as simple as possible with a diatomic molecule composed of light, abundant atoms such as H2 being ideal in practical terms. However, in the case of a chemical rocket, hydrogen is a reactant and reducing agent, not a product. 
An oxidizing agent, most typically oxygen or an oxygen-rich species, must be introduced into the combustion process, adding mass and chemical bonds to the exhaust species. An additional advantage of light molecules is that they may be accelerated to high velocity at temperatures that can be contained by currently available materials. The high gas temperatures in rocket engines pose serious problems for the engineering of survivable motors. Liquid hydrogen, LH2, and oxygen, LOX, or LO2, are the most effective propellants in terms of exhaust velocity that have been widely used to date, though a few exotic combinations involving boron or liquid ozone are potentially somewhat better in theory if various practical problems could be solved. When computing the specific reaction energy of a given propellant combination, the entire mass of the propellants, both fuel and oxidizer, must be included. The exception is in the case of air-breathing engines, which use atmospheric oxygen and consequently have to carry less mass for a given energy output. Fuels for car or turbojet engines have a much better effective energy output per unit mass of propellant that must be carried but are similar per unit mass of fuel. Computer programs that predict the performance of propellants in rocket engines are available. Ignition, edit. Further information, combustion. With liquid and hybrid rockets, immediate ignition of the propellants as they first enter the combustion chamber is essential. With liquid propellants, but not gaseous, Failure to ignite within milliseconds usually causes too much liquid propellant to be inside the chamber, and if forward slash when ignition occurs the amount of hot gas created can exceed the maximum design pressure of the chamber, causing a catastrophic failure of the pressure vessel. This is sometimes called a hard start or a rapid unscheduled disassembly, RUD. Ignition can be achieved by a number of different methods. A pyrotechnic charge can be used, a plasma torch can be used, or electric spark ignition may be employed. Some fuel forward slash oxidizer combinations ignite on contact, hypergolic, and non-hypergolic fuels can be chemically ignited by priming the fuel lines with hypergolic propellants, popular in Russian engines. Gaseous propellants generally will not cause hard starts. With rockets the total injector area is less than the throat thus the chamber pressure tends to ambient prior to ignition and high pressures cannot form even if the entire chamber is full of flammable gas at ignition. Solid propellants are usually ignited with one-shot pyrotechnic devices and combustion usually proceeds through total consumption of the propellants. Once ignited, rocket chambers are self-sustaining and igniters are not needed and combustion usually proceeds through total consumption of the propellants. Indeed, chambers often spontaneously reignite if they are restarted after being shut down for a few seconds. Unless designed for reignition, when cooled, many rockets cannot be restarted without at least minor maintenance such as replacement of the pyrotechnic igniter or even refueling of the propellants. Jet physics, edit. Rocket jets vary depending on the rocket engine, design altitude, altitude, thrust and other factors. Carbon-rich exhausts from kerosene-based fuels such as RP-1 are often orange in color due to the black body radiation of the unburned particles, in addition to the blue swan bands. Peroxide oxidizer based rockets and hydrogen rocket jets contain largely steam and are nearly invisible to the naked eye but shine brightly in the ultraviolet and infrared ranges. Jets from solid propellant rockets can be highly visible, as the propellant frequently contains metals such as elemental aluminium which burns with an orange-white flame and adds energy to the combustion process. Rocket engines which burn liquid hydrogen and oxygen will exhibit a nearly transparent exhaust, due to it being mostly superheated steam, water vapor, plus some unburned hydrogen. 
The nozzle is usually overexpanded at sea level, and the exhaust can exhibit visible shock diamonds through a Schlieren effect caused by the incandescence of the exhaust gas. The shape of the jet varies for a fixed area nozzle as the expansion ratio varies with altitude. At high altitude all rockets are grossly under-expanded, and a quite small percentage of exhaust gases actually end up expanding forwards. Types of rocket engines, edit. Physically powered, edit. Type description advantages disadvantages. Water rocket partially filled pressurized carbonated drinks container with tail and nose weighting very simple to build altitude typically limited to a few hundred feet or so. World record is 830 meters or 2723 feet. Cold gas thruster in non-combusting form used for vernier thrusters non-contaminating exhaust extremely low performance. Chemically powered, edit. See also, liquid rocket propellant. <coughs> Type description advantages disadvantages. Solid propellant rocket ignitable, self-sustaining solid fuel forward slash oxidizer mixture, grain, with central hole and nozzle simple, often no moving parts, reasonably good mass fraction, reasonable ISP. A thrust schedule can be designed into the grain. Throttling, burn termination, and reignition require special designs. Handling issues from ignitable mixture. Lower performance than liquid rockets. If grain cracks it can block nozzle with disastrous results. Grain cracks burn and widen during burn. Refueling harder than simply filling tanks. Cannot be turned off after ignition will fire until all solid fuel is depleted. Hybrid propellant rocket separate oxidizer forward slash fuel. Typically the oxidizer is liquid and kept in a tank and the fuel is solid. Quite simple, solid fuel is essentially inert without oxidizer, safer. Cracks do not escalate, throttleable and easy to switch off. Some oxidizers are monopropellants can explode in own right, mechanical failure of solid propellant can block nozzle, very rare with rubberized propellant, central hole widens over burn and negatively affects mixture ratio. Monopropellant rocket propellant, such as hydrazine, hydrogen peroxide or nitrous oxide, flows over a catalyst and exothermically decomposes, hot gases are emitted through nozzle. Simple in concept, Throttleable, low temperatures in combustion chamber catalysts can be easily contaminated, monopropellants can detonate if contaminated or provoked, ISP is perhaps one third of best liquids. The propellant rocket 2 fluid, typically liquid, propellants are introduced through injectors into combustion chamber and burnt. Up to tilde 99% efficient combustion with excellent mixture control, throttleable can be used with turbo pumps which permits incredibly lightweight tanks, can be safe with extreme care pumps needed for high performance are expensive to design, huge thermal fluxes across combustion chamber wall can impact reuse, failure modes include major explosions, a lot of plumbing is needed. Gas gas rocket of the propellant thruster using gas propellant for both the oxidizer and fuel higher performance than cold gas thrusters lower performance than liquid based engines. Dual mode propulsion rocket rocket takes off as of the propellant rocket, then turns to using just one propellant as a monopropellant. Simplicity and ease of control lower performance than the propellants. True propellant rocket three different propellants usually hydrogen, hydrocarbon, and liquid oxygen, are introduced into a combustion chamber in variable mixture ratios, or multiple engines are used with fixed propellant mixture ratios and throttled or shut down reduces takeoff weight, since hydrogen is lighter, combines good thrust to weight with high average ISP, improves payload for launching from Earth by a sizable percentage similar issues to the propellant, but with more plumbing, more research and development. 
Air augmented rocket essentially a ramjet where intake air is compressed and burnt with the exhaust from a rocket Mach 0 to Mach 4.5 plus, can also run exotmospheric. Good efficiency at Mach 2 to 4 similar efficiency to rockets at low speed or exotmospheric. Inlet difficulties, a relatively undeveloped and unexplored type. Cooling difficulties, very noisy. Thrust forward slash weight ratio is similar to ramjets. Turbo rocket a combined cycle turbojet forward slash rocket where an additional oxidizer such as oxygen is added to the airstream to increase maximum altitude very close to existing designs. Operates in very high altitude, wide range of altitude and airspeed atmospheric airspeed limited to same range as turbojet engine. Carrying oxidizer like LOX can be dangerous. Much heavier than simple rockets. Pre-cooled jet engine forward slash lace. Combined cycle with rocket. Intake air is chilled to very low temperatures at inlet before passing through a ramjet or turbojet engine. Can be combined with a rocket engine for orbital insertion. Easily tested on ground. High thrust forward slash weight ratios are possible, tilde 14, together with good fuel efficiency over a wide range of air speeds, Mach 05.5 plus. This combination of efficiencies may permit launching to orbit, single stage, or very rapid intercontinental travel. Exists only at the lab prototyping stage. Examples include RB545, Sabre, Atrex. Electrically powered, edit. Main article, electrically powered spacecraft propulsion. Type description advantages disadvantages. Resist OJ rocket, electric heating, energy is imparted to a usually inert fluid serving as reaction mass via jowl heating of a heating element. May also be used to impart extra energy to a monopropellant. Efficient where electrical power is at a lower premium than mass. Higher ISP than monopropellant alone, about 40% higher. Requires a lot of power, hence typically yields low thrust. Arcjet rocket, chemical burning aided by electrical discharge, identical to resist OJ except the heating element is replaced with an electrical arc, eliminating the physical requirements of the heating element. 1,600 seconds ISP very low thrust and high power. Performance is similar to ion drive. Variable specific impulse magnetoplasma rocket microwave heated plasma with magnetic throat forward slash nozzle variable ISP from 1,000 seconds to 10,000 seconds similar thrust forward slash weight ratio with ion drives. Worse, thermal issues as with ion drives very high power requirements for significant thrust, really needs advanced nuclear reactors, never flow, requires low temperatures for superconductors to work. Pulsed plasma thruster, electric arc heating, emits plasma. Plasma is used to erode a solid propellant high ISP, can be pulsed on and off for attitude control low energetic efficiency. Ion propulsion system high voltages at ground and plus sides powered by battery low thrust, needs high voltage. Thermal, edit. Preheated, edit. Type description advantages disadvantages. Hot water rocket hot water is stored in a tank at high temperature forward slash pressure and turns to steam in nozzle simple, fairly safe low overall performance due to heavy tank. ISP under 200 seconds. Solar thermal, edit. The solar thermal rocket would make use of solar power to directly heat reaction mass, and therefore does not require an electrical generator as most other forms of solar powered propulsion do. A solar thermal rocket only has to carry the means of capturing solar energy, such as concentrators and mirrors. The heated propellant is fed through a conventional rocket nozzle to produce thrust. The engine thrust is directly related to the surface area of the solar collector and to the local intensity of the solar radiation and inversely proportional to the ISP. 
Type description advantages disadvantages. Solar thermal rocket propellant is heated by solar collector simple design. Using hydrogen propellant, 900 seconds of ISP is comparable to nuclear thermal rocket, without the problems and complexity of controlling a fission reaction. Ability to productively use waste gaseous hydrogen, an inevitable byproduct of long-term liquid hydrogen storage in the radiative heat environment of space, for both orbital station keeping and attitude control. Only useful in space, as thrust is fairly low, but hydrogen has not been traditionally thought to be easily stored in space, otherwise